going to do an explanation of the tidal forces of the moon and the sun on the earth, where they arise from, and also describe, uh, find the ratio of the tidal force of the moon to the sun. So basically, tidal force is a result of what we call in astronomy a differential force. So if this is the earth, and here is the moon, the moon is attracting the center of the earth with a certain force, we can call that F1. The moon is attracting the front side of the uh, earth with a certain force, F2. The moon is attracting the back side of the earth with a certain force, we can call that F3, okay? So essentially, basically, you have something looking like this. Since the center of the earth is a certain distance from the moon, it gets attracted with a certain force, F1. The front side get attracted with a bigger force, F2. The back side gets attracted with a smaller force, F3. Okay? So it's basically like you have an object and all of the object is being attracted, but the front side of the object is being attracted with a greater force. So let me illustrate this. Imagine I take this rubber band and I pull it to this side but as I'm pulling to the side, this uh, hand pulls it with a greater force than this hand. So it's like this, okay? Then it's gonna cause the stretch, stretching uh, effect, right? Same thing's gonna happen. The, the Earth is gonna attract the moon with a certain force. It's gonna attract the center of the moon with a certain force. It's gonna attract the backside of the moon with a certain force. But since the moon is so small, these forces, are gonna be closer to each other. So the difference of the forces is not gonna be as much. So the Earth is bigger object, so the, it's affected by the tidal force of the moon more than the moon is affected by the tidal force of the uh, Earth, okay? So here's what we do. Uh, to determine the amount of that tidal force, we say, what's the, with respect to the center of the Earth, with respect to the reference frame of the center of the Earth, what's the net force on the right side of the Earth? Okay? The net force at the right side of the Earth is the difference of these two forces, F2 minus F1. Okay? So you have here a certain force here we can call F2 minus F1. So that means this side of the Earth, with respect to the center's reference frame, so if I'm at the center, this side of me is being pulled with a net force, the difference of F2 minus F1. So it's, it's almost as if somebody's pulling me. This side is being pulled with a force F2 minus F1. And then my left side is being pulled with a force F3 minus F1. So basically it's being pulled this way, right, with, with respect to my center. This one is going this way, and I'm being stretched. I'm being stretched like this. Same thing is going to happen if you ever fo find yourself falling into a black hole. The tidal force of the black hole is going to stretch you, and you're going to be what uh, cosmologists call spaghettified. You're going to be lengthened uh, this way until you finally get um, completely stretched out and die. So what is the net tidal force here? This one is going to equal... Uh, F3 minus F1. Now, if uh, basically I have a force here that I can call, so imagine, uh, let me draw this here again. This is with respect to the center of Earth reference frame. With respect to the center of Earth reference frame, this side is being pulled with a force I can call delta F1, which is F2 minus F1. Okay, and then I have here a force delta F2, which is going to be equal to F3 minus F1. Okay? So from the perspective of the center of the Earth, it's being pulled this way. So what's the net tidal force on the Earth due to the moon? It's the difference of the two delta Fs. Delta F1 minus delta F2, which is going to equal F2 minus F1, minus F3 minus F1, 
So what is that going to equal? F2 minus F1 minus F3 plus F1. This and this cancel, and you have F2 minus F3. So essentially, all I need to do to find the tidal force of one object on another object is subtract the gravitational force on the front side due to that object from the gravitational force on the back side. And if I have the sun, I'll do the same thing. I'll calculate the gravitational force of the sun on the front side of the Earth, uh, subtract from that the gravitational force of the sun on the back side of the Earth, that'll give me the tidal force of the sun. And if, and if I ever go into a black hole, I'm going to calculate the gravitational force of a black hole, I do the same thing, or I, any other kind of star. If I'm, if I'm on the surface of a star or another planet, I could do the same thing, or any kind of object like that. This could be my general equation, therefore. Two, which we said is F2 minus F3, which I'm going to define now as front side minus back side. OK, so let's now do this here. This is the Earth. This is the moon. Let's write down uh, the distance from the center of the moon to the center of the Earth. Let's write down all these numbers. That's uh, 3.844 times 10 to the 8 um, uh, meters. Okay, uh, 3.844 times 10 to the 8 meters. The radius of the Earth is uh, 6.378 times 10 to the 6 meters. Okay, so what is that going to be there for? Delta F is going to be the gravitational constant times the mass of the moon times the mass of the Earth divided by this distance minus the radius of the Earth. So 3.844 times 10 to the 8 minus 6.378 times 10 to the 6 squared. Okay. Then I'm going to subtract from that G mass of moon, mass of Earth, over 3.844 times 10 to the 8 plus 6.378 times 10 to the 8 times 10 to the 6th. Okay, so I'm adding the radius of the Earth, I'm subtracting the radius of the Earth from the distance of the Earth to the Moon. This is the average distance of the Earth to the Moon. And then the radius of the Earth, I'm adding it to the distance of the Moon, I'm squaring it. And then I'm going to use the gravitational constant, the G is equal to 6.67259 times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of the Earth is going to equal 5.974 times 10 to the 24th. The mass of the Moon is 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. These are all kilogram. And then the gravitational constant is in units of uh, Newton uh, Newton per kilogram squared times meter squared. Newton times uh, meter squared over kilogram squared. Okay, when I put all of this in, I, did, I have done this already previously in the calculator. I put it all in, and you could do this at home also. Put them all in, calculate it. You should get delta F due to the moon. So we can call this tidal, tidal, uh, force of moon on Earth. Let's t write this a little bigger. Delta F, tidal force of moon on Earth. Okay? So uh, we would get this number 1.31. 
668 times 10 to the 19 newtons. Okay? 